Hey there, captive friends. It's Tina from the Scrap and Rabbit blog. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel today. In this video, we are going to be creating two adorable little purse boxes using the Scrappy Tales Crafts A7 Purse Pop-Up Dies and Accessories. I'm so excited about this set. Let's get started. So this is what the set looks like. This first set here on the left is the A7 purse pop-up die. And as you can see, there's so many adorable layers and pieces that you can use. Just to give you an idea of the size, I have a ruler right up there. It looks like it's about four and close to four and a half wide and just about three and a half in height there. And of course you have that handle, which really does add to the height as well. And it's so cool, it has all that stitching. You get a little fringe piece. That handle looks like it's just about, it's just under four inches there. So it does add to the height of your card, but it makes such an amazing, fun little purse card or um, pop-up or box. And in today's video, we're gonna be making a box. There's little, top flaps for the purse as well and straps and so many little detailed pieces that you can use to really create some unique and fun purses. Here is a different purse on the bottom and this one here is about four and a quarter wide at the bottom and then if you go ahead and measure the top I believe that that's pretty close to the other one it's about three and a quarter inches high and again with the strap from the other set you can make they'll be pretty tall and this one here is called the a7 purse pop-up add-on set you have two different flaps there that you can use for your pop-up card a little pocket and these little side layers so much cuteness and i love that little bow now with the strap you have to get that on the initial set because the second set doesn't have the actual handle. This die here on the far right comes with the A7 purse pop-up and it provides the box or the pocket or the pop-up feature and it is going to stand about three inches tall and it is about a square so it is about three inches wide as well and you can see all the score lines that are there for you to be able to fold and have a piece that really pops for my project today i am going to be making boxes here's a gift card just to give you an idea how that size compares in terms of a gift card for the different purse layers because I'm very visual and I'm always interested in how big all of the pieces are. So I hope that this is helpful information for you. I like to imagine the size of what I'm going to be creating. And so that's why I brought that gift card out. So I went ahead and pulled those dies apart, cut them apart and pulled out some of this Hello Kitty paper. For my projects, I wanted to make a a lounge fly style purse. And so I have this Hello Kitty paper in my stash and it's deluxe paper, so it's pretty good thickness, but I did want it to be thicker. So I did cut out some 110 pound cards, Nina cardstock for the base layers. And I decided to flip the die instead of having it the standard where the narrow is at the top, I'm having the wide at the top to really mirror what the lounge fly purses look like. So here is that pocket piece and I'm just going to fold the ones closest to the center of the die cut. And I'm just folding that first line and I'm going to leave the other ones flat. And that is going to give me a nice little treat box. There are so many things that this little box will fit and I think that it's just the perfect size for little goodies. So now that I have those two cut out, I'm gonna grab some liquid glue and glue those side flaps. So I'm just adding gl liquid glue to one side and then I will line the other one up and then just kind of press them together. And there you have a very nice sized, easy to make box. And that is going to be where you can stash all your goodies, your gift card or whatever you're going to create. There are so many samples on the Scrappy Tales website 
and I will have that linked in the description box below. So now I'm just going to go ahead and grab my Hello Kitty paper and adhere it to that sturdy 110 pound cardstock so that it's nice and thick because I really want this box to be kind of a keepsake. It is for my daughter. She is a big fan of Hello Kitty. Finally, she never was when she was growing up, but now that she is a young adult, she adores the Sanrio Company characters, as do I. So I'm really excited to create this little lounge fly themed purse for her. She has a collection of lounge fly purses, and they are so fun and so adorable. And so I wanted to make her a little Hello Kitty one. I cut out this one little layer that is included. And I'm going to make it like a seam towards the bottom of the purse. And so usually with these purses, there's leather elements or faux leather elements surrounding either the bottom on the sides and the top. And so just as a decorative element, I thought that that looked so cute. Now I decided to cut out some brass metallic cardstock for the hardware because I think that that goes really nice with the pink. So I went and cut four different layers out and I'm going to adhere them together just to add some sturdiness. This pink cardstock is only about 65 pounds so it's not that thick so doubling it up really gives it some sturdiness. And so I cut four of those out and I'm actually gluing them from the inside to the inside so that on either side whichever direction you look at it, you can see the stitching and it just looks much more finished and complete. So I really love how these straps look. They're just so darn cute. So now with the little piece there, that little strip is a zipper to put right in the middle there. Um, and there's also the little um, the zipper pull and I cut that out as well. These pieces are kind of small, so the tweezers really do come in handy. And I'm just putting it all together. I, I want to use that zipper for the back side of the purse. I cut out the little hearts, and I decided to stick that as like a little metallic element on the front and the back, right over that pink strip. So here's the box. It gives you an idea of how it's going to glue on there. But before I do that, I'm just going to finish up the straps of, well, for both sides of the purse. And I'm just going to add the glue. I like to take my time when I'm putting together these paper pieced um, elements. It's kind of like therapy for me. And as the project starts to come together, I'm always so excited to see the finished project. This shape, flipping the purse upside down, can also make it like a tote or a beach bag. And I just showed you that little tiny piece for these little, um, like these the little bolts for the purse, those little brass elements. It comes in one piece. You through one run through, you get four of those little dots. And so I'm just adding dots of glue and adding those pieces because I really feel like all these little layers, they just give it such a great touch. And I just love the way that it looks when it's all put together. See how cute it's coming along? <laughs> so now I'm just trying to line up the strap and gluing where it's going to adhere to that front panel. And I like working on grid paper because that does help me to align things a little bit better as well. So before I put it together, I just want to make sure that my straps are put on there evenly so that they don't look crooked since it's going to be like a little treat box as it sits up. So I'm just lining up the two layers to make sure that those straps are aligned. I also double layered the bow with an extra layer of that pink cardstock Un, um, underneath the glittered pink cardstock to give it a little bit of more sturdiness. The zipper is just going to be on the back panel and I'm just trying to choose which layer is going to be the front and which is going to be the back and I finally chose the one on the left for the front since the kitties were upright and I'm just going to glue that zipper to the back panel and I already just love how this is turning out. All these little details with these dies just make this purse set so customizable and just so adorable. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue that first panel on there. I find that sitting it up upright and then pushing down from the inside can help to flatten that. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and glue that back side down now. My glue was giving me um, a little bit of trouble, so I had to keep poking it with the pin. And there is the little box. It's just so adorable. So that's the back side, and then flip it over to the front, and I'm going to add the bow. Now you could add a sentiment. You could do so much more. You can add some of the little um, tassels. There's a tassel die in there. I just decided I really wanted it to look like a lounge fly purse, and so I hope that I did it. I hope you guys think I did a good job. My daughter is just addicted to those purses. So here are some strawberry Altoids just to give you an idea. It's perfect in there. There's room for a gift card and some more candy. So I'm going to be throwing a bunch of little doodads in there to give to her for her birthday. And I think that she's going to love it. The pocket is a nice size. I mean, you can put crafty goodies in there. You can put lots of different candy, even nail polish. So many things can fit in there. So here is the second purse that I decided to create. And I'm going to... I cut it out in white textured cardstock and again with the 110 Nina and I'm just reinforcing those layers. This shape just thought it just it just uh, screamed Hello Kitty to me. <laughs> and so I decided that I was going to go for trying to actually create a face purse because those I've seen those in the store and they are just so cute. So I'm just really pushing down because that textured cardstock is on the thin side and I don't want that glue to dry bubbled up or anything. I have some shiny black cardstock that has the white back and then I cut a second layer of just regular sturdier 110 pound black cardstock. So the shiny side will go in the front and then the regular uh, black cardstock will be in the back. Here are some other elements that I cut out. I cut out that buckle with the pocket, another zipper layer, and for the metallic pieces, I got like a brushed nickel color, and I'm just gluing those together right now and adding those little pieces. I cut some of those little dots for the little bolts as well, and it's pretty much what I did with the other. I'm just placing some glue on all of these cuts and adding all of these little finishing elements, which I really feel make all the difference in the world. Here are the completed straps and look at how cute that shiny paper is with all those little brushed nickel accents. So now I'm gonna glue this little pocket together. There's some little tiny pieces. Again, adds so much detail to your project and I'm just being really fussy about it, getting it lined up just so. And I love this little tool, really helps me to get it on there straight. So now I'm just going to grab the little ovals. Now I found them on the fall assorted leaves dies, you guys. The perfect ovals for the eyes and for the kitty nose. So I cut that largest oval there three times in black and then I cut a the second to largest one in the yellow and that's going to be the little Hello Kitty nose. It's kind of like a yellow orange cardstock. That's what I found that matched her nose the best. So first I'm going to add the little layers to the nose and using the grid paper really did help me to place them on there nice and straight. That little centerpiece for the zipper, I cut that out in the black cardstock for the whiskers and they worked perfectly. So that was a really easy way to get those really super thin strips. And now I'm just gonna glue it all down and you can see her little face is already just so stinking cute. So this is just a way to stretch your dies and think outside of the box of the cuts that you have that you can use for different purposes. And for me, I saw Hello Kitty, so I hope that you see her too and that you enjoy this whole process. The little whiskers are going to stick out, but it's gonna be okay. They're gonna be protected because the box is gonna be in between. And so now, sorry, my head has to go over there to try to make sure that I'm lining it up nice and straight. It is kind of hard to get it on there perfect unless you ha you're leaning right above it. So again, I apologize that you keep seeing my head cover the screen. 
but it's just me trying to be perfect and getting it aligned there nice and straight. So there's the strap and how stinking cute does she look? The red bow I think adds the perfect finishing touch. And so there is her little kitty face. And then now for the back of the purse, since there's no pattern on the paper, you could really go crazy with all the different design elements. So again, I'm lining up the straps so that they're nice and even. I'm going to adhere them to the box, front and back, and getting lots of glue on there. I love how the liquid glue really secures all your layers down there nice. And then I can add the little pocket elements and the zipper elements on the back side of the purse for a really complete look. You could add a sentiment. There's so many different things that you can do. You can add charms. This is the purse that I came up with and I'm just so, so happy with how it turned out. So now I wanna add a little bit more bling and I do have these heart blings. So I have the, it in the red and I'm just gonna add that to the little bow. And then I did have some pink rhinestones to add to the center of the bow for the second pocket. And there you have it. There are the completed treat boxes, the little lounge fly themed purse treat boxes, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Again, these are the two sets. The A7 purse pop-up die comes with the pocket, and then the second set is the purse pop-up add-on. Again, they are linked below in the description box. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really hope you like my video. Have a great day. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye for now.